These videos are strictly only for entertainment and educational purposes. I do not encourage or endorse to any of the behaviors of the people I am talking about in my videos. Melvin Henry Ignatow was born on March 26, 1938 in Pennsylvania. He eventually moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where he worked in business. According to the Courier Journal, he met Brenda Schaefer, a doctor's assistant, on a blind date in the fall of 1986, and the two began dating. But two years into the relationship, Schaefer began hinting to co-workers and family members that Ignatow was abusive. Linda Love, the girlfriend of Schaefer's brother Tom, later testified that she'd gone to dinner with Schaefer in August 1988. At that dinner, Love claimed, Schaefer confessed that she hated and was afraid of Ignato, and intended to break up with him. Ignato himself was aware of Schaefer's intentions, and began plotting with his ex-girlfriend Marianne Shore to murder her. Ignatow and Shore decided that the murder would happen at Shore's house. The two spent weeks making plans that included digging a grave in Shore's backyard and soundproofing the house. On September 24, 1988, Schaefer met up with Ignatow to return the jewelry he had given her, but instead, he took Schaefer to Shore's home. Once there, he pulled out a gun and locked her into the house. He tied her to a glass coffee table, stripped her, blindfolded her, and gagged Schaefer before raping and torturing her. Ignato then killed his 36-year-old girlfriend using chloroform. Meanwhile, Shore stood by, taking photos of the event. The next day, Schaefer was reported missing. Her abandoned car was found near where she lived with her parents. It wasn't long before Ignatow was singled out as the lead suspect. Roy Hazelwood was an investigator for the FBI's Behavioral Sciences Unit and an expert on sexually deviant criminals. He was brought onto Schaefer's case to help investigators better understand the suspect. You don't break up with someone like Mel Ignato, Hazelwood told CBS News. Mel Ignato breaks up with you. However, Following investigations, authorities couldn't find witnesses or physical evidence that linked Mel Ignatow to Schaefer's disappearance, and he extensively denied having anything to do with it. And Schaefer's body still hadn't been found. In 1989, police told Melvin Ignatow he could testify before a grand jury to clear his name. It was during that hearing that Ignatow mentioned Mary Shore for the first time. Investigators then questioned Shore, who readily admitted to assisting Ignato in the murder, and even led police to where the body was buried. Finally, 14 months after Schaefer had gone missing, her body was dug up, bearing signs of abuse that seemed to line up with Shore's claims. Despite a lack of DNA evidence that might help single out a suspect, Ignatow was finally charged with Brenda Schaefer's murder. The trial, however, went horribly wrong. Shore giggled on the witness stand and left a terrible impression, hurting her credibility in the eyes of the jury. The defense even suggested the Shore had killed Schaefer out of jealousy. Ultimately, the jury determined that there was not enough evidence to convict Ignatow. On December 22, 1991, Mel Ignatow was acquitted of the rape and murder of Brenda Schaefer. The judge on the case, embarrassed by the trial's outcome, wrote a personal apology letter to Schaefer's family. About six months later, a carpet installer was pulling up carpet from a hallway in Mel Ignatow's former home when he uncovered a floor vent. Inside the vent he found a plastic bag filled with jewelry belonging to Schaefer, along with three rolls of undeveloped film. When developed, the more than 100 photos proved that Shore's testimony was completely true. The images were the photos Shore had taken during Schaefer's murder, showing Ignato raping and torturing his girlfriend. But because of double jeopardy laws, which say you can't be tried for a crime for which you've already been acquitted, Ignatow couldn't be retried for Brenda Schaefer's murder. Instead, Ignatow was brought to trial for perjury, based on the illegitimacy of his testimony in the murder trial. During the trial, Ignatow outright confessed that he had committed the murder. In October 1992, he was sentenced to eight years and one month for perjury. After his 1997 release, he was charged again with another count of perjury in a case involving Schaefer's boss, who had threatened to kill Ignato if he didn't say what had happened to Schaefer. Ignato was sentenced to another nine years. Melvin Ignato was released from prison in 2006 and lived as a free man in Kentucky for a couple of years before finally getting his deserved fate. On September 1, 2008, 20 years after the murder of Brenda Schaefer, 
Melignatau accidentally fell in his home. He bled out and died at the age of 70. In the truest sense of karma, one aspect of his death was eerily reminiscent of Brenda Schaefer's murder. Apparently, he fell and hit a glass coffee table, Ignato's son, Michael Ignato, told local news station Wave. He will probably go down as one of the most hated men in Louisville, Michael added. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye.